Hi, I'm Kathy Cassidy, and I want to talk to you about primary digital portfolios. First, I want to talk about why you would want to put your portfolios online. And I think the main reason you would want to do this is because of the possibility of audience. This blog post was written by a little girl who was in her first week in grade one. She couldn't yet write something that was readable, but I put in brackets what she wanted it to say and we posted it online. You can see that not only did she have a phenomenal number of page reads, she also got four comments on that post. That says a lot to her about herself. That it tells her that she is a writer and it tells her that what she has to say has value. Another good reason for having digital portfolios is that it creates a community in your classroom that includes other people outside of your classroom in that community. It helps students to learn how to create a digital footprint. Technology and the internet are all part of the culture that our students are growing up in. It's what they're used to. When students use digital portfolios, their parents can come to the student-led conferences already being familiar with their child's work. And the child can spend the time talking about what things they think they have done well and what things they want to get better at. Student choice is another important consideration for having digital portfolios. Digital tools offer students a wide variety of choices in ways to show their learning. If you go to the website primaryportfolios.wikispaces.com, you'll find lots of information about the way teachers, including myself, are using portfolios with little learners. In the sidebar on the left-hand side of that wiki, you'll find links to pages that contain information about places you can host your portfolios, lists of tools and apps that students can use to demonstrate learning, ideas about how to use video to show what the students are learning, and examples of how to do this safely. There are many different options for hosts or where you put your portfolios that are available online and work well for primary students as their portfolios. Some of them are listed on the host page of this wiki. My personal first choice is a blogging tool. If you're just beginning to think about this possibility, you should first check out this Examples of Primary Blogs link on the host page of the wiki. Many primary teachers have contributed a link to their class blogs, and looking through these possibilities will help you to think about what would work best in your situation. In my opinion, the two best platforms for blogging and making digital portfolios with young children are EduBlogs and KidBlog. You can check out the particulars for each of these tools, as well as examples of each, on the host page of the wiki. Both of them have good support for new bloggers. Once each of your students has a blog, you can add to their portfolios using a variety of tools and apps. The easiest artifact to add to a blog is an image. You or your students could take pictures of anything a child feels he or she has done well and wants to include. Another simple way for even very young children to demonstrate their learning is by drawing. On the Tools page and the Apps page, I have included links to a couple of my favorites for this. Students who are still pre-writers can use Audioboo to record themselves telling what they know about something. With Audioboo, you can record from both a computer or from an app. I have also used this tool to record reading fluency. It's very powerful for a student to listen to his or her reading from earlier in the year and to see the improvement there has been. I have included links to other tools and apps and examples of each of these being used by primary children on the wiki. Please explore them and see what potential there really is. Again, all of the links that I have shared are available at primaryportfolios.wikispaces.com.